itself and um, let's see. Uh, yes, okay, so we're connected by myself and Chaitanya. Um, so we are a year two and year three CS students, respectively, and uh, we are both from NUS hackers. Uh, okay, so uh, some simple ground rules just to make this digital format easier to deal with. Um, if you have a question, use the raise hand function on Zoom or send your message in the chat. Um, don't flood the chat with random banter, it'll be hard to pick out questions. If you're stuck, post in the chat first. Um, Chai or Tsingyan, Tsingyan is the other person from NUS Hackers who is helping us out today. In fact, he's the president of Hackers. Um, he'll be, uh, one of them will help you out in the breakout rooms, right? And ask as many questions as you want, but uh, try and keep it on topic as much as possible. Okay, so um, before we start, can I just do a quick poll, right? Uh, who has not done 1010S or O1S? Can you use the raise hand function on Zoom? Right, just to get a quick indication. Uh, okay, I don't see any. Is there one person? No, okay, I don't see any hand raised. Oh, one person. Okay, Ken. Um, two people. Okay. Uh, anyone here doesn't have Python experience? Can you raise your hand? Okay, so um, we will do our best to help you out along the way. This workshop is conducted in Python. Um, and I think it'll be fine, but if you guys need help, just let us know, and one of us will come and help you guys out, right? Okay, so uh, a very simple thing before we start. So why bots? What is the benefit of using Telegram bots or bots in general? Uh, so it's mostly a navigationless interface. So you don't need to dig around in menu bars to find information. If you want an example of why navigation interfaces are annoying, uh, go to the SOC website and try to find the curriculum for an older batch. Uh, it will take you very, very long. And don't do this without Googling, right? Uh, it's not easy. Similarly, try to find out what to do if you're an international student entering NUS now. Uh, you probably will find it very hard to find information unless you Google for it first. Uh, on the other hand, with a bot, you can just talk to the bot and you get the answers that you need. Uh, on top of that, uh, push notifications are very easy. Uh, there's no app or whatever you need to download to get a notification. If you have a bot, it's as simple as uh, receiving a text message from a friend. It comes across very naturally. Uh, there's no complex integrations, device-specific compatibility. Those of you who have done any sort of mobile development know that uh, what works on one phone may not work on another phone. These issues are not present when you deal with bots in most cases. The UI is also very familiar to the end user. So we all know how to use messaging apps. Everybody uses WhatsApp, Telegram, WeChat, whatever, right? Uh, and it works on an existing app, which is why most bot platforms are built on something you already use. You don't need to download something different. And therefore the bar of entry for new users is very, very low. Uh, they don't need, you don't need to convince them to download an app and give them some promo code if they do download your app. It's quite straightforward. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Telegram bots, uh, for anyone who's not familiar with Telegram, it's a chat platform similar to WhatsApp or WeChat. Uh, it's a cloud-based platform. It's not peer-to-peer. -peer, so there is a server in between. And bots are natively supported on the platform, which means that it's not a hack of some sort to get the, the bot running. You don't, if you have, or if you know anything about WhatsApp bots, WhatsApp bots are not real bots. Uh, you do some hacky stuff and then the bot works, but that's not the case here. And texting the bot is as simple as texting someone else, right? Okay, my animations got messed up here, but yes. Uh, so it's almost the same as texting another person. It's very, very easy to use. So what is a bot? Um, a bot is basically a program that responds to your input. In other words, if you saw the bus uncle example, you send start and then the bot responds to you, right? Um, so what can you do with the bot? Most of the time, people interact with bots by trying to manipulate input from the user. So we'll go through three different paradigms today on how people um, interact with bots. And one of the very common ones is input manipulation from the user. So you might tell them, uh, get me the bus timings or add these numbers up. And you take this input and then you do something with this input. 
So we this workshop will be an interactive workshop, and we're going to try to make you guys try to build a bot from scratch, right? Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is build a very simple bot. Uh, it will first just echo whatever you say, and then we're going to try and solve the quadratic equation, which is a very simple exercise in just input manipulation, right? So the prereq for this is you have a Telegram account already, and you have a Gmail account. Does anyone not have this? Can you raise your hand? Okay, can. So uh, I presume everybody has a Telegram and a Gmail account. So let's go through this. Our environment is going to be on this thing called Google Collaboratory, right? So this is an online environment to develop for Python. And that means you don't need to do any setup on your site. But the only downside is that auto completion doesn't work very well, which kind of sucks. Uh, so for now, can we just get everyone to go to this URL? Um, Chai will be helping us uh, um, put this URL in the chat. Yes. And then uh, once you are there, you can create a notebook. And you can name the notebook whatever you want. But this is a request response example. So maybe something along those lines would be helpful. Hey, by the way, if everyone uh, just just wanted to point out, if you can turn on your videos, it'll be great. Uh, just want to make the session as more as much as interactive as possible. But if you're shy, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. just just it's encouraged. Yeah, please. Okay. So, um, in I'll give you guys a minute to do this, and then um. I'll ask if you guys are done. And if you're not done, then you can raise your hand at that point. Okay, so is anyone not done setting up a collab notebook? Can you raise your hand? Okay, uh, I take it as everyone's done. Um, so the next thing we need is um, uh, you need to create a bot. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this is done, but a very straightforward one is you can just go to Telegram, search for bot father, and then uh, create a bot. You can name it whatever you want, but the handle must end in the word bot, right? So uh, I think I can demonstrate what that will look like. Right, okay, let me just change this. Uh, okay. So uh, at bot father, you should see something like this, right? So you just come in here and you type new bot, and then you can name it whatever you want. So you can call it MC orbital. Okay, I'm gonna call it MC orbital demo 01, right? And then you give it a username. So MC orbital 01 underscore bot. And once you do that, your bot gives you an access token, right? So I already have a bot, so I'm going to just not use this one. Um, but yes, should be fairly straightforward. Okay, so once we're done with this, we can go back to Colab. Does anybody not have a Telegram bot set up yet? Okay, no? All right. 
Um, so I let's go through how to use Colab. So Colab is an environment for you to essentially um, run Python, as I said, uh, in Google servers, right? So Colab notebooks are a combination of both uh, text and code. So this chunk here, for example, is a text chunk, but then this chunk here is a code chunk, right? So we're going to do something very straightforward first. In your code chunk, type the following command in. So exclamation mark followed by pip install Python Telegram bot. So what this does is that this will, in the shell environment that, that your code is running in, it will install the package Python Telegram bot. Okay, so I will zoom in so it's easier for you to see this. Okay, um, does anyone have any issues so far? Okay, I think it is though. So um, run this, this will maybe take 30 seconds, 45 seconds to run. And then uh, we can continue from there. Okay, so who hasn't has not finished running it? Could you raise your hand? Uh, just like if anyone is wondering what this command really does, uh, if you're playing around with Python to do software engineering in, in general, any project, uh, you'll come across pip a lot pip basically installs external packages, which other people have created. If in some time in the future, you can create your own package and make pip like help people install that package through pip. So you can host that package online. There's an entire procedure for that. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if Azim's gonna cover what Python Telegram bot is later. Yeah, so we'll go through the what this package does, but it, for, for now, you can think of it as a helper to help you interact with Telegram bots um, through Python, because if you do it by yourself, it will probably be a little bit complex, right? Okay, so um, since nobody has raised their hand, I will take it that everybody has uh, managed to run this command. Okay, so I have sent a link in the Zoom chat. Uh, okay, no, I have not. Okay, now I've sent a link in the Zoom chat. Um, this link is your getting started link for the first bot that we're going to use, right? So all you guys gonna do is come here, um, copy this entire chunk, right? Everything here, or if you're lazy, you can click on raw and then just copy everything from here. And then come to your collab window, create a new uh, code chunk. So it looks something like this, and then just paste everything in. Uh, paste everything in like that, right? Once you are done, I'm going to slowly go through what you pasted in. Okay, actually, before before I go through it, let's let's get this up and running, uh, easily, right? So, and you see this line here, which says "token your token here," um. Botfather would have generated a token for you just now. Paste your token in. Once you are done pasting your token in, click on run time and run all. All right. At that point, your bot should be running. So once your bot is running, right? So maybe give it about 10 seconds for, for um collab to spin everything up. You can go to your bot and you can say anything you want to your bot. So just say like, hello or whatever, and the bot should echo it back to you. If it doesn't work for every, anyone, just feel free to ask out, okay? Yeah, if it doesn't work for you, just unmute yourself and say you're having an issue or whatever, or raise your hand or type in the chat and uh, we'll help you guys out. So at the current moment, has anyone faced any issues with this yet so far? Uh, 
Um, okay, is, is yes an indication that you're facing issues or is yes an indication that uh, it works for you? Okay, if you're facing issues, put like no or something. Okay, cool. Thank you, Adrian. Okay, so uh, at this point, it should be working for everyone. And if you are facing issues, uh, we'll give you another 30 seconds to just raise your hand or whatever and, and voice out that you're having trouble. Okay, I think I think everyone's fine. So uh, let's go through what's going on here. Right? So uh, in the first three lines, we're just importing some packages to help us. Uh, these packages come from the Python Telegram bot library that we imported. Uh, the log part is just to set up logging, so it's easier for us to find errors and whatever later. Um, this is not strictly necessary, but it's helpful, right? The token you have here is okay. We're going to skip to the main function, which is here. Uh, the token that you have is going to help you um, register your bot to the updater, right? So this is essentially starts the bot instance for you. We then create this thing called a dispatcher. A dispatcher is just to dispatch the messages that um, the bot receives. And we add some command handlers. So this is, I think, the crux of what's going on here. Uh, we add a command handler for the word start. So what this means, is that if you were to if you were to send slash start, uh, it will call the start function, and the start function is defined here. So all this does is that it will say hi and your name. So if you want to try it now, you can run your thing again, and you can just send slash start to it, and it will say hi and your name. Uh, similarly, there is another command handler for the help function. So the help function here just replies the word help back to you. Um, so it's very straightforward. What you're doing here is you're intercepting messages that have the following um, uh, commands, and then you run this function when this message is uh, sent. Now, what if you're not sending a command? So for example, if you were to say hello, bye-bye, or whatever, say your name, uh, it will go here. So we're adding a message handler that filters only text input, right? And then when that happens, it calls the echo command. So it comes to the echo command, and then we, um, we just say, you said whatever. Now, what's happening here on this line is we're starting polling. So polling is the mechanism by which this bot operates. It will, every time you talk to the bot, Telegram has an API called the get updates API, which I'll show later, right? Uh, your bot will go to that place, it will see what updates there are, and then it will process those updates. So this is something that you can eventually configure. You can say that I want to check for updates every one second, every 10 seconds, every minute, whatever. It's completely up to you, right? And we'll go into this start polling thing a little bit later, but for now, we can just leave it as it is. Uh, and then this will just let the bot idle and wait until you know, another message is received, all right? So what we're going to do now is we are going to try to create a simple bot to um, solve the quadratic equation, right? So let me just change this. Okay, so I will help you guys and I'll guide you guys on creating a simple bot, that, a simple function that helps you uh, solve the quadratic equation. The expected input uh, would be something like just two, three numbers, one, two, one. Uh, and it'll be prefaced with the command itself. So it's probably be something like something like that, right? And then your output will be something along the lines of what your two roots are, right? So I'm going to show you a little bit of how we can start. And then I'll give you guys about 10 minutes to try and build it yourself, right? So let's do that. Uh, okay. So um, the first thing we need to do, of course, is to register a function that will solve the quadratic equation for you. So we need to therefore create a handler for it, right? So we can just copy this line, uh, paste it, and we can call it quadratic. 
and then we can give it a function called quadratic, right? So it's a simple uh, function and it just does what we want it to do. Um, now for simplicity, I'm just gonna copy the echo function and add it here and we'll rename it to the quadratic function too. Uh, we can update the comment here to say it uh, solves a quad quadratic equation. Equation, right? Okay, so um, we can see here that the content the person sends comes into a variable called update the message text. So for all the words that the person sends in the message, based on the format that we expect, we can get them um, using this variable. So we can define a variable called all words, and that is basically an array split by spaces, right? Um, of all the words in the message, right? So we will therefore get uh, the following four items in the array. So the, the command itself, which is the first word, followed by the three numbers that we might send it, all right? Um, after this, we only want these terms, right? However, this array is going to be an array of strings. So we're going to convert it into just an array of three numbers, right? So this is done here. Okay, so let me explain what's going on here. For those of you who have taken 1010S or O1S, this should be easy to understand. Uh, we are taking the, the all words, actually I can just replace this, uh, all words, right? Okay, so we take all words, uh, and we take items from one until the end of the array. So from index one until the end of the array, which basically means it's these three things, right? And then we run a map operation on it. So what it does is it takes every item in the array and then runs the integer function on it. So basically my array of strings now becomes an array of integers. And then we use a list function to convert that from a map object to a list object. At this point, you now have, um, so this is an array or list of three numbers, right? Uh, you should be able to do some manipulation here. And then you can um, reply with uh, your, with the roots of your, your uh, quadratic equation, right? So we'll give you guys about 10 minutes to do this. And before you guys go, is anyone lost? Is anyone unsure of what's going on or needs help? Uh, is confused? You can either post your message in the chat or you can raise your hand. If you want me to explain something a second time, I am happy to do that as well. Okay, I take it then you guys are fine. Um, so let's go until about uh, one thirty-eight, and you can try to implement the quadratic function yourself very quickly. Yeah. Um, beyond um, beyond doubts or questions, which help you do your job, if you have doubt, if you're curious about what a lot of the code looks like, so if you don't know what an updater or a dispatcher really is, then we can try to help you with that as well. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so if, you, if you're curious about some Telegram concepts and you'd like to know more about it beyond just implementing a bot yourself, yeah, uh, we can try to help you with it. Okay, all the best. If you're done, you can probably just do a check mark so we can keep track of how many people are done. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, so um, I've received uh, two questions uh, and I'll answer them one by one. Okay, so why do we need to use one colon? Okay, so what this all words array is going to look like, right, is going to be something like this. Okay, so the, we will get an array that looks something like this, which is not very helpful to us because uh, first of all, this is not a number you want to process, first thing. And the second thing is these are strings, right? So when we do one colon in the Pythonic syntax, um, all underscore words, yep, will give you items from IDX one till and okay uh the next question we got was that uh do we need to keep this run notebook running every day to use the bot or once the code works i can just leave it okay so um i'll okay i didn't put this in the slides but i'll talk about hosting briefly briefly at the end uh bots need to run on a server somewhere right so that server can be your computer or whatever Google's not going to let you run this on their server 24 seven. They will time you out and tell you to stop it. Um, you will eventually need to look for a hosting solution that works for you. Uh, common solutions include DigitalOcean, uh, Amazon Web Services, Azure, et cetera. They all have some sort of student plan, uh, which you can make use of to host your bots. Uh, and assuming you, you build your bot in Python, then you will need to figure out how to deploy a Python project to those relevant hosting services. Yeah. Uh, then, I mean, hosting comes with its own set of concerns. So if you go for the free tier, your function will typically go and sleep after 15, 30 minutes, something like that, uh, because you're not paying for it. So then you will need to account for that by giving your bot time to wake up and et cetera. So this is a different set of concerns that you will have to deal with down the road, but it doesn't concern the immediate creation of a Telegram bot. Yeah. Is it possible to deploy from Colab? Are uh, you, to the best of my knowledge, you can't because Colab is just an environment for you to run the code now, right? The reason we picked Colab for this workshop is simply because with Colab, you can, um, you don't need to do environmental config. So your computer might have some version of Python. My computer might be running some different version of Python. We don't have any of these problems. Um, it's one web browser, no OS specific problems, et cetera. Uh, but Colab is not meant for you to, to deploy code out of, yeah. I think typically in Colab, if you just start running your bot, it'll time out because I think there's a cutoff time. If you start using, if you're running a program in Colab for more than one or two or three hours, then it'll, and there's a set number of hours, then it'll just stop running the program. So you can't really host because your bot will stop running after like four or five hours. Yeah. Okay, I think it stops running if there's no progress being made. Uh, in other words, the bot is just idling, then it will stop running. If your bot is consistently doing work, for some reason, people are talking to your bot, like, 24 hours a day, every minute, sort of thing, then that may not be a concern. Yeah. Does anyone have any other questions? Okay, so you can expect the output to look something like this, right? Your roots are R1, R2, some, something along those lines. Um, for the guys who don't have Python experience, uh, you can do this, right? So um, by putting an F in front of the string, it creates what's known as a formatted string. And then anything inside braces will get replaced by a variable. So if you have something like um, R1 equals to five, uh, R2 equals to 10, then it will replace 
uh, R1 and R2 with 5 and 10 respectively. So uh, this might be something you may find useful. Anyone facing any issues? Okay, so I'm going to paste um, my approach to this, and then we can see if anyone wants to discuss this. Okay, so uh, it's 1.37, so about nine minutes, but I think you guys should be done. Uh, so A, B, and C are the terms uh, from here, right? So it's the first number, second number, and third number. Then uh, we calculate the discriminant, and then we calculate solution one and two, and then we just reply that, right? Does anyone have anything that doesn't roughly look like this, and they want to verify if what they're doing is sensible? No? Okay, great. So uh, once you put in your token here and you run it uh, and, you and you send in slash quadratic and whatever, you should get your solutions. Is this not working for anyone so far? Has anyone been unable to test their board and make it work? Okay, I see no hands are being raised and nothing's in the chat. So we shall continue. Um, Okay, so just give me a minute. All right, so let's move on to the next thing you can do in terms of what, right? Uh, so great, we can now blah, blah, blah. Uh, we can now manipulate input. So that's one thing, right? Uh, and we talked about uh, manipulating user input, but what if someone wants you to retrieve information from somewhere else? So the very, very common uh, implementation of this can be getting information from a database or API, right? So for example, as you does this, um, actually most bots get information from a database or API somewhere, right? So let's do another quick one. You, we will run a command that can get a picture of a cat Right, so let's give you guys five minutes to try and figure this out. Um, there's this thing called uh, catfaservice.com slash cat. Uh, so if you call this URL, if you paste this URL straight into your browser right now, you'll just get a picture of a cat. Uh, and how do you send a cat back to your user? Just now you used update.message.reply text. Now for, in this case, you will use update.message.reply underscore photo followed by the URL, right? Um, remember to put photo equals whatever because uh, photo takes in many, many parameters and you want to specify which one you are providing. So I will do the same change on my side and then we can take a look.
Uh, remember that you do need to update your context as well. Uh, if not, uh, sorry, not context, you need to register the, the cat handler so that this command actually works. Right, so this should work. Uh, and as an exercise, try uh, calling the function again and again, multiple times. See what happens. Okay, um, so did anyone notice that you keep getting the same photo back? Was that an issue anyone saw? If you did just say yes in the chat. Oh, can you see the code again? Oh, sure, yeah. Okay, so I'll show this to you on my side. Uh, okay, so um, this is the currently running version, right? So if I say hello to it, it will just say hello back to me. And if you run cat, it will consistently respond with the same image over and over and over again. And there's a reason for that, right? So what's going on right now is that after your first call the first time you return this url telegram caches this photo so telegram says that from cat as a service.com slash cat this photo comes in the future when someone gives me this url i will just return this photo that i've already cached um, as a result you get the same photo back over and over and over again so this can be a concern when you call uh, information from the same place uh, with the same parameters over and over again, and um, your value keeps getting cached, which means that the information doesn't update. Telegram knows the response, and it just sends you that response instead of checking the server one time, right? So what you can do to change this and make it better and not cause this specific issue is you append a random number at the end of the URL that you're calling, right? So what that looks like is something of this sort. So you just have a random number, right? Um, whatever you want. And then you add a question mark followed by whatever, like ID equals the number, right? So what this does is this is known as a query parameter. It says that in your URL, you have a specific query and you're looking for a specific ID. Now, cat as a service doesn't actually take in any ID, it doesn't matter. But by randomly changing this number over and over and over again, um, Telegram stops caching these values, which means that um, unless the same number happens to be repeated twice, you will not get a cached value back. So let's rerun this. Um, and I can show you the change that this uh, provides. So my bot is starting up. 
okay, it has Patra. And hmm, why am I getting the same same picture back? It's not supposed to do that. Did my bot not stop just now? Oh yeah, Did it didn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need to restart the bot. Oh, if you get an error saying random is not specified, then uh, you need to just import random at the top. Yes, software engineering problem. Uh, specifically, you may need to type in um, from random import random, right? Uh, I'll just send this in the chat. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, there you go. This is a different photo, right? So every time you call cat, you get a different image this time because Telegram stops caching these responses, right? Um, anyone has any questions at this point? Okay, I take it as there are no questions. Um, Okay, so let's go back. So now you have a simple working Telegram bot, right? And you can you can echo a message, you can send a photo, um, you can solve the quadratic equation, which means you can manipulate user input. Uh, but what else do people do with uh, Telegram bots? So blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, yeah, so we talked about caching. All right, so um, what else do people do? So a very common use case for bots is uh, alerting people when something happens, right? So let's say it starts raining or NES releases your semester results and you want to be alerted. So if you guys have heard of uh, have Rain Coco, it's a very useful bot. Uh, well, for me at least. Um, so this is what Rain Coco looks like, right? Um, Every time it detects rain in Singapore, it sends me a text telling me that uh, it thinks it has started raining and um, just, just be aware of it. So these images come from NEA, but the point is you can create alerts that inform a user when, uh, when some, some activity has taken place, right? So we're now gonna create another bot that allows us to interact with uh, a web page. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to give you guys a URL you can go to, right? Uh, give me a moment and I'll paste it in the chat. So uh, this is the URL, right? Um, let's okay. Um, so uh, we go to Chai's URL in a minute. The window, the URL I just sent you with the ncroc link, um, that has a very simple web page that's currently running on my computer, right? Uh, we're gonna make a bot that goes to that web page and detects if the color is blue. So in essence, what the task is now is we will monitor this one web page, right? And right now it says green, but on my end, I can control it and I can make it say blue. Right? And if you refresh the web page, it will tell you the color of the day is blue. Um, we want to make a bot that monitors this web page, and when the color changes to blue, it sends you a text. All right. So how do we do that? So go to the link that Chai sent you, right? Um, and once you go to the link that Chai has sent you, uh, there'll be a bunch of code that you can copy. Copy that code to a new 
um, collab notebook, right? And then from there, we can continue. So I'll give you guys a minute to do that, and then we can continue from there. Um, also, is anyone currently in NUS um, and trying to access it? If you are in NUS and trying to access this link, uh, for some reason, NUS blocks and block. It thinks that I'm trying to attack their network. Um, so you can switch to wireless and SGX, or you can trust me when I show you that uh, the web page says this. Yeah. Okay, so once you've copied everything over, we're going to go through some simple concepts to understand how we can interact with the web page, right? So I'll start that in about 30 seconds or so. Okay, so let's talk about how you interact with a web page, right? So the internet transmits primarily, okay, I'm not going to go into full screen mode, you can just look at this. Um, the internet transmits primarily on this thing called HTTP, right? So you see preface with all your websites and things like that. So HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Um, and HTTP comes with verbs, right? So the four main verbs are get, post, put, and delete. These are the very common ones that you encounter. Uh, they correspond to operations that you will do on a web server. So for example, when you go to your browser and you type www.google.com, your browser makes a get request to google.com and then Google returns the web page Google. So you are getting it. On the other hand, if you are trying to let's say sign in somewhere, what you are likely doing is sending a post request to the server. So you are sending the server your credentials and asking the server to create a session for you. Uh, similarly, you can do put and delete operations. So you might delete something or you might update something, right? For the purposes of today's discussion, we will just focus on the get uh, verb, right? So how we interact with a web page programmatically is we make a get request to the web page. And to make a get request to the web page, we use a Python library called requests, right? So let's go back to our, um, our notebook on Colab, right? And earlier on, we talked about how we can import packages using the exclamation mark followed by pip install, whatever. So you need to now import these two packages at the start of your Colab session. Right, so let's. I'll change my screen. I'll do it alongside you guys so you can see what you should be doing. Right, so right at the start, the first code block, just type exclamation mark, pip install request, and pip install Python terminal port. Then, once you're done, the second part of this should be just uh, the chunk of code that you copied over from the link that Chai sent. At this point, is anyone uh, unsure of what's going on, or is confused, or needs some assistance? Uh, you can either type in the chat or you can raise your hand. You're a slow typer. Okay, no problem. Uh, sure. Um, all right, so uh, once you're here, you can just click the run button on the side and it will just install everything you need it to install for you. All right, now let's go through uh, this chunk of code here. I'm going to explain to you what's going on first, and then um, I will write the code once with you. And after that, uh, you will try it yourself, all right? 
So what we're going to do is we need to write. So there's a manual poll function here, right? When does this function get called? This function gets called after all the handlers um, are registered, okay? Uh, we have deleted for the sake of simplicity all the um, other handlers that we had earlier. And we just have the manual poll uh, function, which takes in the updater, and then later it will do something. So what we're going to get it to do is we are going to make a get request to the link I sent you just now. So we can do this here, r equals to request.get. Um, and that is to the URL I just sent you guys, which is this. Now, once we have the content of the web page, uh, the content is available to us in a variable called r.content, right? So uh, we turn that into a string, and then we check if the word uh, blue can be found. So if blue in here. So if we do find the word blue, what we can do is we can get the bot to send us a message. So send message takes in two parameters. It takes in a chat underscore ID equals something we don't know yet, and some text. The text is straightforward. We can say uh, the site says no, right? Quite straightforward. So what is this chat ID? This chat ID is a unique chat ID that every single person who is on Telegram has. How you get your chat ID is um, there are two ways. One is you can uh, go and observe the request that you sent to the bot and try and get your chat ID from there. Alternatively, you can do this. Uh, let me show you my Telegram screen. Okay. So uh, you guys can do this alongside with me. Just go to a bot title, user info bot. Right? So this is the handle at user info bot. Um, and you can just say start and it'll give you your chat ID. So in my case, it's this number here, right? Uh, I'm going to switch back to Colab because this should be fairly straightforward. And in your chat ID, you can just paste your chat ID here, right? Yeah. So, of course, you want this to keep running, right? You, you, you want it to keep checking the web page. And when it finds blue, it sends you an alert. So you can wrap this in a while true loop, right? Um, once you wrap this in a while true loop, uh, it will just keep running this. And the problem with this is that uh, this means it will keep querying the web page over and over and over again, which is going to be sending a lot of requests per second. And we don't want that, right? So. After the loop ends, we just put the bot to sleep for a short while. So we can do time.sleep1, which will put the bot to sleep for one second. And then we can remove the return statement because there's nothing to return. And if all goes well, this should uh, already be a working version of uh, this checking thing. So what I will do now is I will run this and let's check if it does work. Okay, so let me update the site. Okay, so uh, if you go to the website, it says green right now, right? And uh, okay, so this was earlier on, but um, let's, I can clear my chat history. Okay, so when I update the website to say blue, which is now, um, it will tell me every second that the site is blue. So this is really helpful when you want to do server-side alerts because it means that when something, some event takes place, you can check for it. And once that event has taken place, you can update the user because that condition was met. All right, so now it's your turn. Uh, take a look at this function. I'll leave it on the screen for you guys. And uh, it's for you guys to try and implement this yourself. And try to make sure it works for you too.
right? So I'll change the thing to say some other color for now, maybe yellow. Um, and at 205, I will change it to say blue. And hopefully everyone's bots are working at that point. At this juncture, does anyone have any questions? Uh, you missed the ID part. Okay, so uh, you can go to a bot titled at user info bot. Uh, I'll send the handle in the chat. Just give me a moment. How do you get the ID automatically? Could you clarify what you mean by that? Uh, you mean get the ID from the user, is it? Like without having to go through the user info bot or something like that? Okay, sure. Uh, I'll explain that in a moment. Give me a minute. Uh, in the meantime, you can make use of the user info bot. Okay, so um, I believe, okay, I can't remember the exact API, but I believe it's updater.bot.id. Uh, that will give you, so uh, let's, I'll, I'll go back to the uh, previous collab thing that we had. Just to quickly explain this and then we'll, change the tab back. Okay, so over here we said, um, you said update on message of text, right? I believe you can say something like, uh, update dot, uh, update dot bot dot ID or something like that, right? Um, I think, you can check I the think Python. Yeah. I think it's update dot message dot from underscore user dot ID. Okay, so update the message dot from underscore user underscore ID. Okay, so um, um, dot ID. Okay, yeah, try to the rescue. Uh, so yeah, so this will give you the ID of the person who sent the message, right? Uh, we are currently hard coding it because uh, you're only sending the message to yourself. But if in the future and in the next example, this will be something you will require. Yeah. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, in general, just a note that it's not very easy to get user IDs because that uniquely defines, uh, yeah, you, it uniquely defines a message. It uniquely defines a chat. So unless you have, unless the person has talked to the bot himself or herself, there's no way to get the ID automatically. Uh, yeah. You need to send a message to be able to get your ID back because the ID is very sensitive. And if you can just share it around, then you probably get a lot of random bots sending you messages. Yeah. Yes, well, we'll talk about the implications of that later because I had a very fun experience with this yesterday. Um, but essentially, the idea is that your Telegram username is temporary. You can change it but your Telegram ID is permanent and you can't change that. So this is information that you typically don't want to put in the public domain. You don't want to share it anywhere. You don't want to, to you know, put it out there, all right? Okay, so um, has everyone been able to, try, uh, to get this up and running for themselves? Okay, I see a bunch of people pinging my laptop. So, uh, yes. 
Okay, is anyone facing any trouble with this right now? If you are facing trouble with this, you can raise your hand, put no, type in the chat, you know, whatever. Change your Zoom background to say help me. Okay, we'll give it another 30 seconds and then we can move on. Uh, when you do death, you know, Uh, okay. I believe that is just, um, okay, so I'm going to copy and paste this question publicly so everyone can see it. Uh, okay, it turns out you can't copy paste messages. Okay, yeah. so this was the question that was just asked, right? Um, this is just a Pythonic syntax. Uh, the underscore operator is a discard operator. Am I right, Chai? Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it basically just um, <laughs> ignores that value. Uh, Python has a few different ways for you to define functions. Um, you can do it uh, without the typing there, or you can do it with the typing there. It's not very sensitive to, to how you choose to do it. Yeah. So uh, for context, um, maybe I can find a simple example. Give me a minute. Okay, so um, I think 30 seconds out. So I'll just quickly show you guys this. Uh, where's the start? Okay, so the start function here is defined in this manner, right? Um, so what's going on here is that you're saying that the update uh, value is a type of update and the callback context, you're not really defining anything for it here. You don't care. Uh, you, you could write it this way too. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, Python just, because Python is an untyped language, uh, it can make it difficult for you to keep track of the different classes and types. And by using this syntax, you help the person who is going to use your code later on, if someone wants to call the start function, and for yourself too, it helps you understand what types you're taking in. Yeah. Uh, generally, if you use PyCharm or VS Code or something like that, the in the intelligent assistant thing, like whatever the hint, hinting software that you have, um, it will take note of this and tell you that if there's a type mismatch and stuff like that. Um, this is purely like a good coding practice sort of thing. Uh, for, this part here tells you the return type as well. You can choose to ignore it. That's completely up to you. Yeah. Right. Uh, I hope this helps. Okay, so um, I take it that nobody has any issues with this and everyone has followed along without any trouble. So let's move on. Okay, so yes, uh, thankfully nobody has done anything funky with my web server and I will shut it down at this point. Uh, so yes, okay, great. So now you can monitor other services. You can monitor a web page, you can monitor an API, you can you know, do whatever you want with that. Uh, what else can you use bots for? So um, bots can also be used for group-based interactions. For those of you who have managed to play Werewolf or Quisarium or something like that on... No change to blue, sorry. Uh, what do you mean, Adrian? I did not quite get this. The day color. Oh, right, 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 right. I forgot to do that. Uh, that's a very good point. Okay, um, I'm very sorry. Then the, the URL will change. So I'm going to send you the updated URL. Just update that in your bot. Uh, 
Okay. Oops, sorry. Yeah. So um, I'm very sorry, everyone. Uh, just update the URL to this, and I will update the web page. Okay, the web page is updated. Does it work for everyone? <laughs> yes, your bot will do that. Um, you can you can either update the timeout or you can stop your bot. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the point of this exercise. Uh, to understand that when the bot changes, it's uh, when it detects something, it can alert you when a certain condition is met. Okay, um, I will shut the server down now. So that's that. Okay, moving on. So let's do something simple. We're going to do an attendance bot. Uh, it's a little complex and a bit difficult for you to do it on the spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you these two links in the chat. Uh, follow along to understand the implementation first and then try yourself later at home. Uh, okay, you're probably already at home, but uh, try yourself later. Right. So uh, let's demonstrate what this bot does first. Um, Chai, can you help me start the bot up? Yeah, uh, just give me a minute. Uh... Yeah, my collab is taking a while to start. Yeah, there's a bunch of kids running Telegram bots on collab. All right. Uh, okay, I think my bot's running. Okay, so um, what we're going to do here is, okay, so I'm going to start the bot and it has now registered that I exist, okay? Um, and I believe Chai has also started the bot, right? So this context is it's simply like a class and then people are taking attendance okay so we're going to uh i'm going to start an attendance session right start attendance and this allows me to pick a class uh so we've got a simple class 12a right and i have now sent a message to everyone who's in 12a to mark their attendance uh funnily enough i'm also in the class so uh, i will mark my own attendance and if you notice the message updated to have, oh, okay, I think we overwrite the message. Uh, okay, that's a bug in our code, it's fine. Uh, but whatever, so this is my computer, but uh, when Chai uh, added his attendance information, um, he updated on my side, right? So this is the, the sort of basics of group dynamics bots, right? Where multiple people can do multiple different things, and then it collectively collates information somewhere. Uh, as I mentioned with the example of Werewolf or Quisarium, and in this uh, example of our attendance, there's also another bot, I believe. Um, it's called NUS Peer Tutors or something. Right. So, this is another example of one of these group dynamic bots, right? So there's a channel here that allows people to, to ask for tutoring requests. And uh, then you can click buttons to message the tutors or message the students and sort of things like that. So uh, group dynamic bots are very helpful in understanding or in dealing with group-based interactions. It goes beyond just one-to-one -one things. Uh, I'm going to show you the code for this. And then we can slowly try to understand what's going on, right? Okay, so uh, this is the collab link. Uh, if you're interested, you can click the link and follow along as well. So we'll go straight to the main function first because that's the easiest thing to understand, all right? Um, first, we call a function called init data. So what init data does is that it basically creates a mapping of um, which students have which, uh, which classes have which students um and the reverse mapping as well right uh we're not using a proper database but in reality you should probably use a database to store this information 
Uh, then we pass in the bots token, have the same dispatcher as per usual. And then we register two command handlers. One is the start command and one is the mark attendance command. And this is a new concept which you have not seen yet. Uh, it's called a conversation handler. So, so far we've looked at command handler, we've looked at message handler, but now we look at conversation handler. So what a conversation handler does is that oops, it, it allows you to set up um, like conversation flows, basically. So it gives you context that you can handle um, when a conversation starts. So in this case, the, the conversation goes as such. We, we do start attendance. Then after start attendance, you go into this state called the class state where it just takes everyone in the class um, to mark the attendance. And then uh, once they respond, then it, uh, um, it, will, it will progress from there. So you can actually create very complex branched conversations. All right, um, let's go to this uh, start attendance uh, function first. Right, so um, what we do here is we create a custom keyboard. So if you've played with diagram bots before, you, you would know that um, sometimes the bot gives you a custom keyboard you can use with like big, big buttons. Um, that's very straightforward to do. You just create this thing called reply markup keyboard and you pass in an array of uh, whatever options you want. Uh, Telegram automatically then uh, arranges the UI for that for you. So in this case, we just have one option, which is the one class we had 12A. And then uh, we just add the text choose class and then the, the keyboard, right? Now, once a uh, start attendance session is done, uh, the teacher will click which class they want to uh, mark attendance for, it goes into this state, the class state, right? So the class handler is here. So what it does is it creates a, um, it creates an attendance session and it takes note of the message ID and the chat ID that, that is currently active. The reason we take note of that is because we want to be able to update the same message with all the people who have marked their attendance so far. Right, so we take note of all this information and we create an attendance session object. This implementation is purely for demonstration purposes and it is not very comprehensive. So you could do it yourself separately and in a different manner if you wanted to, but this is purely for demonstration purposes, right? Uh, then we say that this class has an attendance session and we just save that. Oops, yeah. And, and because we, um, Okay, you don't see this, but we've got a list of the students in the class, which is just me and Chai, right? Uh, we go to each of them and then we send them a message saying, hey, mark your attendance, right? Uh, yes, okay, I think Chai was fixing his bug. Uh, I think it should be fun. Oh. Okay, wait, uh, let, you know what, I'll refresh it later, it's fine. Okay, so um, once he sends a message to everyone, um, the student can then click on uh, send the command mark attendance, which will then trigger the mark attendance function, right? So you come back here to the mark attendance function. It tries to figure out which student is in which class. And then what it does is that it edits the teacher's message and tells them that, hey, this person marked the attendance, right? So um, that's pretty much it. It's a really, really simple bot but it might take you a little bit of time to just go through the entire thing and understand um, which variables are being modified where. So what I suggest is that with the URLs given to you and later on with the slide deck itself as well, you can uh, download the code and run it yourself. And then you'll understand how the different variables are being modified. Right? So at this juncture, does anyone have any questions? Okay, if you have a question, raise your hand or type in the chat. Okay, I think that's a no. Okay, so let's move on to uh, a specific aspect of the code that we saw just now, which is, uh, is it here? No, it's here. Okay, we saw that we've got this thing called um, updater.scrolling, right? So what is start polling? Uh, let's try and understand that. Okay. 
So, um, I suppose you can see my slides. Uh, so what exactly is going on when we do data.start polling? So polling is a mechanism that allows you to go somewhere and keep reading information. The same way we did with the, uh, the server-side alert board just now, right? Uh, you go to the website that I gave you and you kept checking it to see if there's any new information. So in the polling example, the user sends a bot to Telegram and then Telegram updates this API called the get updates API, right? So the message is then stored on the get updates API. Your program at some interval will check the get updates API. And if there is a message, it will collect the message and then it will process the message and send the response back to Telegram. And then Telegram then forwards the response back to the user. On the other hand, you can omit this, this uh, checking workflow and use what is known as a webhook. So what a webhook does is you tell Telegram, hey, if you have a message for me, come find me. I'm not gonna come keep checking your website, all right? So when a user sends a message to Telegram, uh, Telegram will just forward the message to your program. Your program then processes it and sends it back to Telegram who forwards it back to the user. Why do we care about this? Polling in general is a mechanism that is uh, a little slow because it is dependent on how quickly your, your, your program is running. Um, it's simpler to set up, but it consumes more resources because you need to every second or whatever go and check uh, this website. Now, if your function is a blocking function, that means maybe you have a slow network and processing stuff takes some time and whatever, and you haven't multi threaded your stuff correctly and so on. Um, it can be a bit slow to respond. Maybe processing your message takes 10 seconds, but um, you want to check the get updates API every one second. You can't do both. On the other hand, with web posts, you typically have a web server running. It means that you can actually take in multiple of requests quickly and easily. Right? So um, I think it's important that you understand uh, this dynamic. Yeah. So now moving on, we are almost at the end of the workshop. So uh, there's a lot of other things you can do with Telegram. The bots API on Telegram is very, very, very comprehensive. Um, so other things you can do, you can accept payments. Telegram has a payments platform and you can um, make transactions and things like that through Telegram. So you can go here and take a look. There's a bot called shop bot. You can go look at that. That's a demo bot that Telegram has for you to see how you can set up a shop. Uh, you can log in with Telegram. So there's this thing called Telegram Passport that functions the same way as your sign in with Google button. Uh, you can log into various space with Telegram, which makes authentication a lot easier. You can create games with Telegram. So you've seen Quizarium, you've seen Werewolf, but there are games with full-fledged UIs that you can create in Telegram, which leverage on the bot API as well, right? Now, if you don't want to build in Telegram, okay, we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, in the context of Python Telegram bot itself, uh, there are a lot of examples on their learning by example page on their GitHub page. So you can go to their GitHub and go to the subsection learning by example. And they've got a variety of examples from echo bot to calculators to various other things. And you can use them as starting points to understand how you could build the use case for your project. Uh, there's also the documentation section there, which will be quite helpful to you in understanding what functions you can call. Uh, if I guess correctly, many of you guys could have been exposed to Node.js over Orbital because uh, React and whatever are very common platforms. Uh, if you want to build a Node.js, there's a Node Telegram bot API. This is the most popular one right now, but there are other uh, Telegram bot APIs as well. So you can actually go to Telegram's website itself and they give you the SDKs for various other languages. So it's not just limited to JavaScript and Python. You can build it in C Sharp, you can build it in PHP, you can build it in Golang. You know, it's entirely up to you. Okay, some good practices. Ah, okay, so this is quite uh, funny. So your token is sensitive. Oh no, I deleted my chat. Okay, your token is sensitive. So don't commit your token to Git. Um, when I was preparing the materials for this workshop, the initial token I used for this bot was committed to Git. And 
there was one time, I think yesterday evening, where I just texted my bot for fun. Turns out someone had taken this token off my GitHub and created their own bot, which was trying to get my account credentials. So it asked me, um, hey, we need to verify if you're a real user. Uh, send us your phone number and Telegram was sending an OTP, enter the OTP here. Uh, which, of course, if I had gone through with it, would have allowed them to take control of my, uh, my instance. Now. Let me find, I think I have a photo of this. Uh, let me pull that up. Uh, one moment. Yes. Okay. So, um, ah, yes, Chai sent it to me. Thank you very much, Chai. So uh, this is what was sent to me, right? Um, basically, someone hijacked a token and was trying to hijack my, anyone's Telegram account who would text this bot. Uh, so be, be very, 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 very careful with your token. Don't commit it to Git. Uh, don't put it on GitHub. Don't put it publicly anywhere. And if you think your token has been compromised, go to bot father and revoke your token, right? Uh, the common way for you to deal with tokens and this sort of sensitive data is to inject it into what is known as an environment variable. You can go and Google what this is. And um, essentially the OS will inject uh, the token in for you so that it doesn't get put on Git anywhere. The other thing you should take note of is um, manage your packages properly. Whatever you use, PIP, NPM, Maven, uh, keep your code neat and easily structured because with Telegram bots, you have many, many function handlers. Uh, you may have many extra libraries you may be using to call databases or APIs or whatever. Uh, manage this neatly. Don't put everything all over the place. Your own code will become very, very messy, right? And lastly, uh, this, this set of sites are on my GitHub. I will send you the link in the Zoom chat. Um, but in effect, what you can do is the slides are there. Uh, you are welcome to come by and look at the slides and try these things out yourself. Um, the collab projects are also in the site itself. So feel free to reference them when you're building your own thing as well. Yes, okay. So um, the collab things are here, the Git repo is here as well. Uh, you can take a screenshot of this if you want. The link is up here in the chat. And I think, uh, Chris, can we send this to them later? We can, right? I think. I don't know where Chris is, but whatever. I think we can send this to you guys in by some manner later on. So um, yeah. Now uh, we've got another half an hour. So do you guys have questions? Or do you guys want to, if you guys have an idea for whether that you want to use your bot for and you're wondering whether it can be done or cannot be done, we can sit here and just give you guys some tips on whether how you would handle such scenarios. And if you are shy to ask, you can, uh, you can type in the chat, I guess. Like if, yeah, you can just join the breakout room with one of us. Oh yeah, you can join the breakout room too. And then, you know, Yes, no. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll wait another five minutes. Um, and if no one has questions, then, uh, you know, we can just end the meeting and you all can go to your own thing. Take a break before your next session. Um, alternatively, feel free to text any of us or text uh, Prof Zhao, who can possibly redirect you to mentors or whoever to help you out with this. If you have nothing to ask, I think it's fine. If you can, yeah, you can just leave. Yeah. Thanks so much. Well, I don't want to start with that. Let me check the chat.
Okay. Um, so uh, I will I'll just copy this question and paste it publicly so anyone who's listening can see this. Okay, so the question is how we can store um, data for each user in the database. So there are two parts to this. The first part is um, which platform you're using, which language you're using. So if you're doing this in Python or JavaScript or whatever, you need to decide um, uh, th that platform determines which database connector you use. The second question is what kind of database do you want to use? Um, there are various types of databases. So um, they are structured or what they call relational databases like MySQL. Uh, they are no SQL databases which store things as JSON. So there's Firebase, there is Redis, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, for each of these databases, there's a database connector for the language that you're using. Uh, you basically need to understand how the database connector works. And then based on that, you would um, send and retrieve data from that database. So your flow would be something like you receive a message from the bot. Um, maybe you want to see if the user ID, what their favorite color is, for example, and you have this data in your database. You use the database connector to call your database, see this user ID's favorite color is, I don't know, red or whatever, and then you return that to the end user. So that would be the general flow. If you can give me a bit more specifics on what language you're using, and if you have an idea of what database you want to use, then uh, I can probably provide more information. So for some background, um, when we were building the attendance bot, um, we initially used Redis as the database of choice. Okay, uh, you guys are using Python and not sure of what database to use. Okay, so um, there are a few tools you can, few databases you can use. Uh, a very common one is Firebase. Um, it's very easy to set up and you can interact with it through a uh, HTTP endpoint. You can also use Mongo if you want to do that. Um, or if you want something really, really fast and you don't care about a lot of functionality, Redis is something that is very quick and easy to set up. Yeah, so I'll write the names here. So Firebase, MongoDB, Redis. Yeah, so like Azim was saying, typically how you do it is there are tutorials on how you like use certain DBs in Python, for example, right? So if you're using Python, you can just Google tutorial on integrating Python with Firebase. And that'll give you how they'll give you a tutorial on how to handle a database and for a general Python program. But you should realize that your Telegram bot is also a general Python program. So whatever le you learned in whatever tutorial, you just figure out how to connect the database. You can just put that in your Telegram bot code and things should work fine as far as I know. Yeah. So the link I just sent you was for, um, is Firebase is getting started with language of choice. So you can scroll down and just pick which language you're using and then it'll give you the guide for, for that, yeah. Um, it's a bit hard for us to suggest which database you should use because um, that's really dependent on how far you're trying to go. And it's also dependent on your exact use case, right? But uh, generally, Mongo, Firebase, and Redis should serve your purpose. Uh, so this is Firebase. Okay, um, guys, okay, actually, never mind. I can see if some people are like, awkward, but okay, I will paste this question publicly so everyone can see. Uh, I've been playing around with the Python Telegram bot recently and have an issue with the conversation. Yeah, 
is it possibly because it, hmm i am not entirely sure about this uh chai do you have any ideas reading the question um so if there is a state which uses a message handler that filters for text the bot does not recognize the message sent by the user and so it does not move ah oh, interesting oh. well for what it's worth i don't think your problem is pie chart yeah, yeah definitely not yeah like typically yeah. the conversation handler flow is that you have an entry point right and that's usually a function or a message handler um after that you use return statements to go to the appropriate state so i think i will we'll probably need to look closer at your error or your code to actually figure it out um, what I can suggest is that uh, if you are certain that even the example code from their own repo doesn't run properly, you can file an issue on GitHub with them. Mm, yeah. Right. So no, and no um, they can then tell you that it's a mistake on their end, or uh, the maintainers or whoever can come in and point out what you're doing wrong. Uh, because from, from my understanding, if you are running the example file and it still causes the same problem, then it might really be, uh, there's a bug somewhere that's not addressed. Okay, so we'll be um, cutting off at 2.40 if there are no questions asked. If you are typing something, then just let us know in the chat that, you know, hey, I'm typing or something, so we know. I'm not sure. Is the person who asked the conversation handler question still there, Azim? Yes. Okay. So I think like, so typically you move to move across states by using a return function in your, in your handler functions. So let's say like we ask for in our attendance, but what we ask for class, right? So once we do like start attendance, then at the end of the start attendance function, there's a return statement which takes you to another function which is mapped to like another state so i'm not sure if you're doing that return return thingy because if you just enter like a text and expect it to go to the state that might not work yeah uh, but if if you if you if you're still doubtful maybe i can jump on a breakout room with you yeah just, uh, just we have an yeah, example yeah. of this right try i can just uh, yeah, yeah i think you can So um, it's where's the class state? Yes, here. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. The sure conversation can, yeah. Sure. Um, 
I think it's okay for you to PM us. Uh, I should probably just check with Prof Zhao if they have a specific mechanism for this. Uh, because Orbital has their own funky structures, right? Which I am not entirely familiar with. But yeah, I'm not sure. You can drop us an email. I don't know, Z. Yeah, I think you can drop us an email or something. Like yeah. That. yeah. Uh, is Chris here? Chris should know about this, right? Where's Chris? I think Chris is not here. Oh. Okay. Um, sure. So I think you can drop I drop yeah, us you... an email. I'll drop our emails here. Yeah, so just feel free to send an email um, and we can help you guys. Okay, so I think there is nothing else. Uh, we can end the session now, I guess. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. And all the best for your orbital project.